All right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, what are our Psalms of the day? 15, 45, 75, 105, what? Yeah, 135. Very good. All right. Let's go to Psalm 75. All right. Psalm 75. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horn, do not lift up your horn on high, or speak with haughty neck. For not from the east or from the west, and not from the wilderness, comes lifting up, but it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. And listen to this. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, And he pours out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. What does Jesus pray in the garden? We remember, let this cup pass from me, right? The cup of God's wrath, but not my will, but your will be done. He drank the wrath of God so we wouldn't have to. Verse 9, but I will declare it forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. And I guess if you're an Aggie, you love verse 10, right? So anyway, all right. Well, good psalm there. And um, tonight we, uh, we're going to talk about serving, all right? Serving, uh, serving for the purpose of godliness and uh, for our, I think, I think for a good base text, he put it at the end of the chapter. But it, I, you know what? Let's read it at the beginning. And uh, it's Joshua 24. Joshua 24. And we probably all know these, uh, this text. But let's go to Joshua 24. And usually you'll see this like as a verse in somebody's house. <laughs> You know, but that's okay. That's a good verse to put up in your house. And go to verses 14 and 15. Joshua 24, verse 14. And again, we're just looking for the key word serve, right? That's what our topic is tonight. All right, God's word says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. And in faithfulness, pray away, put, excuse me, put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, which is kind of a funny way to say that, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me... And my house, we will serve the Lord. All right? So uh, that's, those are good verses. Um, how we, huh? I know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably packed away, though, somewhere right now. I don't know what we have in our house because we, it's all in boxes. So anyway, but uh, uh, anybody read the chapter? Um, so it's interesting. He starts out talking about the Pony Express uh, which only existed for, he says, 17 months. I didn't realize that. But then you had the telegraph line that was invented. Uh, but you had the, these guys that would ride these ponies and deliver mail uh, on the Pony Express. And what, well, what an SMU's really good football players called that too? The running backs back in the 80s? Yeah, that's right. 
That's right. That's probably, I know that name more than I know the actual history thing. But, uh huh. Really? That's interesting. Huh. So apparently, though, when they, when they were advertising for, for men to do this job, and it was a hard job, you know, they'd ride horseback, and uh, I think it said like 90 miles, no, 75 to 100 miles a day, and they had to change out horses, obviously. But uh, it said wanted young, skinny, so I guess I'm out, wiry fellows not over 18. I mean, just think about that. So <laughs> they were looking for juniors in high school, you know. Yeah. Must be expert riders willing to risk daily orphans preferred. All right. So uh, a pretty dangerous job, uh, not, a, not a job for the faint of heart. Anyway, Don Whitney shares this story because... Um, he says, he kind of relates it to serving God. Serving God is not a job for the casually interested. It's a costly service. God asks for your life. He, he asks for service to him to become a priority, not a pastime. A priority, not a pastime. I, I like how he put that there. Um, yeah, so it's a, so serving, right? Living a life of service is, is a costly profession. Right, God asks for our very life. Uh, thoughts on that? Anybody read that? Did that strike you? Yeah, it was pretty neat. Uh, along with the description of who they wanted, mm -hmm. that they didn't want anybody to impact the family that they could possibly get away with. It. Right. Also, that even in the coldest weather, they would ride without coats and stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> probably, probably. So, um, so you know, tonight we're talking about different areas and how we are all gifted to serve the church, um, and we're and we're all we all have different gifts, and we're actually going to talk a little bit about that here in, in a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, we're all gifted. You know, some may be gifted in preaching or teaching. Some may be gifted musically. Um, you know, and and then others may. Like their gift is just to kind of work quietly in the background, right? To serve food, to, to wash dishes and things like that. But we, are all, we all have different gifts and we all need to serve the church. Um, so that's within the church. Well, what does serving on the outside of the church look like? It may be babysitting for neighbors, taking meals to families, uh, running errands for somebody who's homebound, um, you know, feeding pets, watering plants for vacationers, you know, all, you know basically serving. Right, just kind of, kind of saying, "Hey, you know, it's okay. I will help you out." Right, and so he says, two of the deadliest of of sins, sloth and pride, loathe serving." All right, and so we all have kind of elements of pride in us. We all have elements of slothfulness or laziness in us, and so those two sins can really make it hard to serve and to have a proper mindset to serve. All right, and so Don Whitney says, every Christian is expected to serve. Every Christian is expected to serve. When God calls his elect to himself, he calls no one to idleness. That's interesting there, no one to idleness. Uh, we read Joshua 24, Psalm 100 says, serve, 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness, right? Um, Hebrews, what does it say here? I forgot it. Hebrews 9.14 talks about serving the living God. Um, and then he says this. This is kind of interesting. He says there is no such thing as spiritual retirement in the kingdom of God. You know, we're to serve all of our lives. What are your thoughts on that? There's no such thing as spiritual retirement in the kingdom of God. Just, just to, I sometimes wonder, like, for a pastor, you know, because a lot of pastors have to retire for health, health reasons, but, um, but, you know, even my dad is still taking interims, right? And he's in his 70s, early 70s, and still healthy enough to do that. So he's still serving, even though he may not be, you know, uh, at one church as, as their actual pastor. 
Um, but I sometimes wonder in my life, you know, will, will I ever really retire or will I do things kind of like that, you know? Um, because it's a, the call to ministry is a, is a lifelong calling, you know? Um, or at least it should be. But, uh, yeah, what, do you th- what are your thoughts on that? that? That we may retire from our literal jobs, our physical jobs, but there is no retirement in the kingdom of God. We are always to serve the Lord. Thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yes, that's right. People physically limited can pray and encourage, call people on the phone. Wow. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 That's a really good point. And that's one thing that, um, so he didn't mention it in here, but um, yeah. Uh, one aspect that I think a lot of churches miss about service is just um, older saints investing in the younger saints, right? And teaching them, hey, how is it to live the Christian life? I mean, I'll tell you, in my opinion, um, most youth, like you guys, they don't need, because their whole life is entertainment, no offense, but, you know, you got entertainment boxes in your pocket right now or, or whatever, but... They don't need a bunch of, of like, they don't need like loud music and this really cool hip preacher. They just really need a godly saint who teaches them this is what it means to be a Christian, right? Uh, this is what it means to be a follower of Christ. Uh, this is what it means to be, a, especially in today's world, hey, an older man teaching a younger man, this is what it means to be a man. You know, you don't wear a dress. Okay? Uh, I mean, that's what they're learning. 40 hours a week, it's okay for them to do that. And most, in a lot of places. Um, and of course, on the flip side, young women uh, who are constantly searching for an identity and maybe a relationship or something like that, you know, um, they need those older saints. Say, look, you know, the right person will come along. You don't have to just fly after one relationship after another, you know. So godly women help teach younger women. Godly men help teach younger men. And that is a fantastic way to serve. Maybe the best way to serve. So, That's right. Discipleship. Amen. So, um, yeah, good, good thoughts. Any more thoughts on that? All right. So six motivations for serving. All right. So he lists six mo- things that can kind of motivate, motivate us to serve when we find it maybe difficult to serve. And the first one is motivated by obedience. Motivated by obedience. Make sure I have the time here. All right. And um, he says we should serve the Lord because we want to obey him. And then he gives a, an interesting example here from John Newton who wrote the song Amazing Grace. And, of course, I think we most, most of us know his story. He was a slave ship captain. He was saved. And then he became a pastor. And uh, a really good movie that came out in 2008, I believe, and it's still good, uh, it's called Amazing Grace. And it, um, it's got some pretty famous English actors in there. And so if you ever can watch that, I, I recommend it. Um, but John Newton says this, If two angels were to receive at the same moment a commission from God... One to go down and rule Earth's grandest empire, which that wouldn't happen, but for sake of argument, you know. The other to go down and sweep the streets of its meanest village, the poorest village. It would be a matter of entire indifference to each which service fell to his lot. In other words, the angels would be perfectly happy doing whatever God called them to do. All right? And so we can't, it would be silly, I mean, we just... An angel that didn't want to do what God told him to do or, or wasn't happy, you know, doing what God told him to do. Well, what kind of angel is that? That's a, that's a fallen angel, right? That's a demon. That, and, and they, you know, they, many did fall. 
And so, uh, but yeah, and so that, I thought that was interesting that like, you know, the angels that love God and, and serve God now, you know, some probably get to, I don't know, guard pretty significant people, and then some get to guard, you know, the poorest of the poorest, right? And there, or whatever, I don't know how it all works out, but, uh, but both are happy serving the Lord. And I thought that, you know, that's a good thing for us to remember that um, it's about obeying God and being faithful where he has put us and just to serve in our own spheres of influence. Some will have a lot of influence, others not so much, but yet we can all be faithful in serving and being obedient to God, all right? Next, motivated by gratitude. He says this, if we will remember all that God has done for us, how he has saved us, how he has you know, given us eternal life, kind of like what we've been talking about on Sunday mornings with a lot of the spiritual blessings, um, you know, that, that motivates us to serve, when we will remind ourselves what it was like to go from being dead in our sins to being made alive in Christ. You know, when we think about that before and after. And uh, when we remember that, we will want to serve. Um, and then he also says this. He says, do you see that there is nothing God could ever do for you or give to you greater than the gift of himself? So that's something else very important to think, too is like, you know, we all, we all want God's blessings and we want him to do things in our life, but the blessing of salvation is the greatest blessing we could have. Because he talks about like if, you, if he gave you a bunch of money, you had $10 million every day for the rest of your life, but you didn't, he didn't save you, what, what good is that, right? Or if you could live a thousand years as a 25-year-old, but then you died and went to hell, what good is that thousand years compared to eternity, you know? And so... Uh, the greatest blessing we have is salvation, and that does motivate our serving. Uh, next, motivated by gladness. Uh, we are not to serve God grudgingly or grimly, but gladly. Um, what does it look like to serve God grudgingly or grimly? What does that look like? I'm sure we've seen it. It's, it's in churches, right? Yeah, people complain. You know, um, yeah. Wait, what? What, Gary? What are, you, are, you, are you coming at me? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So I I was thinking. A couple of examples, you know, um, like, I don't know who does our flowers. They always do a nice job, and they probably don't want any recognition. But you might have in some churches some lady be like, well, nobody ever compliments me for the flowers that I put out. I mean, then, then don't do the flowers, you know. I mean, <laughs> we don't have to have flowers. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, why are you, ma'am? Oh, okay. Anyway, well, cool. Yeah, yes, he does. But uh, other things, people, I've heard, um, oh, you know, like um, kids, kids making a mess or, you know, and then people complain about having to sweep it up. Well, at least you got kids there, you know. And that's like, and look, I, I know there has to be rules about, you know, kid, how kids behave and, a worship service or in a church building, but you know, I, I I'm not going to get all mad if a five year old runs down the aisle to see me. I'm just not going to get mad about that because you know, you know, some people are, well, you shouldn't run in church. Well, Pentecostals do it all the time, you know. Anyway, so anyway, so it's just just simple. But yes, there has to be rules, there has to be decorum. But it's like, okay, what by what heart are we approaching these things? You know, 
And so. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It, that's true. That's a good point. I'm, I'm, I was the same way. Yep, I hated mowing as a kid, but it's different when it's your yard. All right, so, um, yeah, to remember that serving is a privilege, not a burden. Um, he says, even the best of things is miserable slavery in comparison with the glad privilege of serving God. I thought that was an interesting line there. Um, so, you know, do you, he asks these questions. Do you serve on that church committee with gladness or with gloom? I guess it depends on the committee <laughs> and the other members maybe. <laughs> anyway. do, you, do you serve your neighbors willingly or reluctantly? Um, you know, do we have the get off my lawn mindset when the neighborhood kids come on? Do your kids get the impression from, this is, this is a good one for as a parent. Do your kids get the impression from you that serving God is something you really enjoy or merely endure. And man, that is something that I, that I know me and Alex have talked a lot about. And it's, um, y'all know who John Piper is, right? So John Piper has a son that's apostate and he puts out these, you know, he's fallen away from the faith. And he puts out these videos where he mocks the church and mocks his rearing, you know, in, in, the, in the Christian faith. Um, and they're really dumb, but, but he has a following. And I know it probably breaks John Piper's heart to know his son's doing that. Um, and so just as a, as a pastor's kid growing up, you know, and I, I've talked to her about this, uh, you know, I, I have a special burden that I want, I want my kids to not do that, right? I want my kids to love God, love the things of God, and, and not and not feel those pressures of being a PK or, or whatever, you know. And so, I, in fact, it was the guy that will be preaching for me in a couple weeks, Wes Smith. I was talking to him about this one time. And, uh, you know, I said, how do we keep our kids in the faith? And, and Wes said, you know, we can't just teach them the system, right? We have to teach them to love it. Does that make sense? To not just follow God's laws, but to love following God's laws, right? To love the things of God. And, and you know, that is, um, that's hard to do. But, but I think one of the things that kind of what Don may be getting at here is, you know, the old phrase, a lot of more is caught than taught, you know. When our kids watch us gladly uh, serving God, um, even if they're adult kids, right, but yet they see us, later in life, you know, gladly serving God um, while they're off being miserable in their youth or young, you know, 20s, 30s, whatever, I think that, that could really impact them. So, anyway. Uh, next, motivated by forgiveness, not guilt, right? So we just think about, man, we've been forgiven, and so I want to serve. Um, and uh, Spurgeon said this, Charles Spurgeon, the child of God, works not for life, right? The child of God works not for eternal life, but from life. He does not work to be saved. He works because he is saved. You see, the people of God do not serve him in order to be forgiven, but because we are forgiven. You know, that's, that's good stuff too. Uh, five, motivated by humility, Let's turn there. Philippians 2. He doesn't put it in the book, but he talks about Jesus wa uh, washing feet, the disciples' feet, and that's a great example. But, but also, I wanted to just mention Philippians 2. And we'll go, we'll go uh, to verse 3. And so again, we're talking about uh, motivated by humility to serve. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility 
count or consider others more significant or important than yourselves. That's hard to do. Um, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Okay, so in other words, we base our humility on who Christ is, who, though he was in the form of God, right, God in the flesh, eternal son of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, or some translations say a thing to be used for his advantage, right? But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And we'll just keep reading because these are great verses. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, Jesus, the eternal Son of God, um, stepped out of heaven, right, came to earth, wrapped, on, wrapped himself in flesh and died for our sins. Uh, he humbled himself, you see. And surely, um, since we've been saved by Christ, um, we, we are to humble ourselves as well and consider ourselves as not that significant. You know, you know what I mean? Like we, we need a little bit of uh, humble pie. Exactly. It's not about us. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds like a song you need to practice and sing. Sounds like something needs to be sung. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yep. So, um, yeah, so to Karen's point, she said it's not about us. And, you know, Don says here, in life there's always going to be a part of us where, where we want to get something for our service, right? We want to get that recognition. We want to get that good job. And, you know, and it's good to give those things, uh, but we can't, we can't just be, we can't serve to get those things, you know what I mean? Uh, then we're not serving with the right heart. Uh, we're serving um, in hypocrisy. It's yes. It be yes. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. Good. All right, and finally. Yeah, we're doing good on time, so we can talk about spiritual gifts. Uh, we're motivated by love, so love for God, love for our neighbor should motivate us to serve uh, the greatest commandment, and the second is like it, right? Um, and so, anyway, all right, so he kind of starts talking about spiritual gifts, and this is a difficult topic, um, and one, I'll just be honest, that I've not really studied that much. I tried to look at some things today that at least would be, I mean, you might know more about this than I do, which would be great. Um, but, you know, but people have all, sometimes they've asked me, like, hey, what's your spiritual gift? I'm like, I don't know. Sarcasm? <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not a spiritual gift, by the way. But, you know, or, or maybe as a youth, we would, we would do um, these spiritual gift tests, and, or maybe, no, maybe it was in college. And Chris, you know, you just, you can make those things say whatever you want them to say, depending on how you're feeling. So it's, it's kind of, I mean, if you're not, if you're not being honest, right, which, so it's like, well, I, I really want to be sympathetic and have mercy. So yeah, I would, I, you know, you know what I mean? And so I don't know, I've just never really done that. I'm not mocking those things, but um, just for me, I've never really thought much about it. So I thought if you were like me, I thought it might be helpful to kind of talk about some spiritual gifts uh, there's four different places in Scripture that talks about gifts. I think the most helpful thing that I read today was that um, 
these are, this is like a, how, how do you put it? A, um, it's not like a, an exhaustive list, right? Uh, but yet, the, 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 you have these four places in Scripture that give you a, a lot of good examples of, of what is a spiritual gift. And Don Whitney says that he thinks every Christian is given one of the seven spiritual gifts listed in Romans 12, 4 through 8. And so I just want to list those out, and I kind of wrote these down. Um, and But little, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. So other places, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about spiritual gifts, and then that, that does get into the whole, like, tongues, miraculous powers, uh, healing. I'm not prepared to talk about that. Maybe you can, but... Um, you know, that, that's a lot of debate about are those things still, what are those things? Are those still, they still here? Um, uh, you know, so that Ephesians 4 talks about different uh, gifts and things like that, uh, such as prophecy, pastor, teacher, apostle, evangelist. Um, those are all pretty easy to understand. We'll back up and talk about prophecy in just a moment. But obviously there's, we would say there's no more apostles all right, that was an office for that particular time. Uh, you know, the original disciples minus Judas plus Paul, right? Um, and so, um, but there's not like modern apostles where they're getting new revelation from God, you see. And I remember an apostle was someone who had had an encounter with the resurrected Christ, which Paul did, and they were sent on a mission. Okay, that's two, two uh, qualifications. So, uh, and then 1 Peter 4.10, uh, you have talk about service, which is kind of what we're talking about tonight, and then speaker, which is probably more teaching and things like that. Uh, so, Romans 12, uh, verses 4 through 8, mention these. I wrote them out to make it easier for me to talk about, but um, I'll read them, then we'll kind of go back through them. So, the first one is prophecy. Next one is service, teaching. Uh, encouraging or extorting or persuading, giving, leadership, and then showing mercy. All right, again, that was prophecy, service, teaching, encouraging, giving, leadership, and showing mercy. And um, so let's talk about those real fast, all right? And if you have some, hopefully you, you kind of, you kind of know, maybe you've done some tests or things like that. But the one, the prophecy one has always kind of confused me. And I read a definition today that, that I thought was really good for our own context. But this person described prophecy as boldly and fearlessly proclaiming God's truth. I like that. So, you know, it's not, obviously prophecy in scripture sometimes is, you know, it's a, prediction of what is to come, you know. Other times it's saying this is, this is what God's going to do. Um, but now, you know, we're not, we're not, we can't predict the future, you know. And so it's boldly and fearlessly proclaiming God's truth in his word, all right. And so that's, that's I thought that was a really good definition. Uh, thoughts on that? Boldly, prophecy, boldly and fearlessly proclaiming God's truth. Have you heard that before? What's, what's another? Oh, yeah. So prophecy is boldly and fearlessly proclaiming God's truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that might, he might fall under that category in Ephesians 4 for evangelists, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's a good way to understand too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That, that's right. They're boldly proclaiming God's truth. Yeah, I would say that. I would say because prophecy is in three out of the four. Um, that would probably be a, a, a preacher needs to have that. 
to be a to be a good preacher. What's that? Where at? Mm, that's right, yeah. So our, as our faith is built, does have that gift that you mm -hmm. That's good. I like that, yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, next, service, just serving others, right? I mean, we all kind of know what that is, just being a servant. Um, some people kind of have a mind... They just, they see a knee, they go do it, right? Others, we have to, like, be told, hey, that, that person needs you to do this. And so, um, but, you know, so that's great. Uh, teaching, people are, different people are gifted to teach in the church, teach Sunday school classes, um, small groups, or, or whatever it may be. Um, but that's not for everybody, as we all know. And uh, next, encouraging or extorting yeah, exhortations. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wrote kind of slash exhortation there. Um, others are, are are gifted to encourage. Um, and again, just just to remind you, so this is these are not natural abilities. You know, some people have good natural abilities of leadership, things like that. Uh, these are special gifts from the Holy Spirit upon salvation. All right, and. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and and now it could be we're using our talents as a, a, a as an element or an overflow of our spiritual gift, right? So, um, you know, singing probably could be an aspect of encouraging, maybe. Right, because if we're if we're thinking about you know we're, we're you know or either like if you're giving a solo or a special the the congregation is thinking about the words thinking about the message of the song so you could be you could be encouraging their hearts. Um, well, you know that's a so I try to look up that word briefly and and yeah. I think it has some of that too. Yeah, it's like, hey, quit, quit sinning. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I, I think it's it's kind of it was in the definition. It was kind of both of that word. Uh, next is giving. Obviously, some people are, are they have a lot of money. They can give a lot, right? So praise God for that. Um, next is leadership. God's gets to different people to lead His people. Um, and then finally, showing mercy. On all, again, all these are out of Romans 12, showing mercy. And so, yeah, I, I think, um, what's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 that's good, it's good. Mm hmm mm-hmm. True. You know, so we had to say, oh, you know, yeah. Yep. My dear, I think Luca might be freaking out in there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. So he says, if you're a Christian, you definitely have a spiritual gift. All right. And then two, God's purpose in giving you that gift is for you to serve with it for his kingdom. Um, and he says, if you don't know what your spiritual gift is, don't worry. I mean, you know, it's not, that's okay. You can serve faithfully your entire life without really knowing it. Uh, but he says this, he says, um, you know, if you have an inclination to teach, try it. And, and if you determine, hey, uh, man, that, is, <laughs> that didn't go well. That may not be your spiritual gift, right? Um, if, um, if, you, if you really have a lot of compassion for others and things like that, then, man, start, start, start that. Start a mercy ministry of some kind, right? Or, or figure out what you can do to show mercy to people, and, um, and God will, um, 
you know. God will affirm that in you. Um, and so, yeah, so try things out. I think, I think that's probably the best way to know your spiritual gifts um, is to try things out. And if, you're, if God has gifted you to do it, then, then you're going to know it. If he hasn't, then move on and try something else. Um, and so, anyway. So finally, serving is often hard work. Um, and, um, but yet, the more we serve, again, it's not just about serving, but it's about serving and to grow in godliness and to be more like Christ. Amen. Yep. Psalm 100. Yep, yep. So, anyway, I, you know, if you've never thought about spiritual gifts before, maybe, maybe I piqued your interest. Um, you know, you can look things up online. Um, if you don't want to, that's okay, too. So, again, I've not studied this a ton. And um, for the longest time, I wouldn't know when somebody asked me, hey, what's your spiritual gift? And I might still hesitate, even though it's probably, I mean, I would, I, I would hope prophecy is one and uh, teaching is one. I mean, obviously I'm doing this now, you know. And so, uh, but, um, you know, other things I might, you know, like um, what's, uh, you know, like it sometimes I may not see a need right away. But you may see it and tell me, hey, this person has a need. Can you, can you go talk to them or see them? And then like, oh, okay. Because I, you know, I just may not think about that, about that right? Because we all have our different gifts and, and things like that. So anyway. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 That's right. So, anyway, yeah, I think we have a lot of great servants in our church. So, anyway, all right, any, any further comments, questions, thoughts? I hope we're still enjoying it. You know, I think this has been good. If, if y'all think this has been helpful, kind of practical. Wonderful. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, next chapter. Oh, man. We may not have anybody show up for this one. It's about stewardship. Is he talking about tithing in here? I don't know. No, I think it's stewarding the time. Yeah, use the time wisely. No, that's going to be good. Anyway. All right. Cool. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for these saints. Uh, Give them a great week. Bring them back here Sunday. I mean, we have a great worship service. Um, And may we serve you well. In Jesus' name, amen.